Most of my life, I felt like an outsider, always a bit out of place. But when I moved to LA, I felt at home. I was happy. I had you. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna focus on the invention, see what I can do, and I just have to have confidence that I can do something with it. If something else pops up, that's cool, but I can't control that. There are a lot of arguments that that's not true. Well, I am trying to make career things happen. Like, like next week, I'm gonna do a stand-up gig, which I've never done. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, because I'm, I've been working so hard on this that I haven't even, I keep losing sleep. I only get like four hours of sleep a night. Um, just because I'm thinking so much about, uh, about, uh, about what equipment to rent for the documentary, who I need to talk to to make the invention happen, and if the documentary is going well, because also, I'm not letting myself think about this too much, so I probably shouldn't vocalize it, but say the invention doesn't pan out, maybe the documentary is my meal ticket then. I have to leave LA. I'm living with my parents and going to college. But I have this documentary I'm editing and it becomes so good that people say, wow, we should hire him back in LA, which I can control from outside. of That, well, I, I regret that I just said that because that's, I don't know about. And right now I have to just focus on what I can control the invention. I can't create acting opportunities. I can only do so much, like getting my name out there, getting my face out there, going to a stand-up gig, going to do this thing with Michelle Kahn. What was her name? I don't know. Michelle Kane or something contacted me. She's a BuzzFeed person, or used to be a BuzzFeed person, and wants me to do this, be in her video Tuesday, um, where she does this Star Wars thing. And so she said I could film behind the scenes there. and. Mo maybe that will generate opportunities. But I've also written a book before thinking that everyone would read it and then I'd get cast in roles and it didn't work. So I, the only thing that like seems like I can control making me money right now, uh, what I can see is the invention, yeah. Hey, I'm Dax, how's it going? Do you like being in jail? Make sure you fold these correctly. How's it going? And um, Dax, let them know why, what, why you're in jail because of the music copyright. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead and tell them your reason. So YouTube jail is is um, they started to do this thing where they put you in jail, and uh, yeah, orange. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Easy. yeah. Thanks so much for coming out, man. Yeah, thanks. Uh, when will you put the video on? So the video's going up on the 15th of December. Okay. Uh, the same day Star Wars goes out. Cool, cool. Yeah. You think this should, like, like, be viewed by a lot of people? The other ones have been doing pretty well. Cool, cool. Yeah. If you share it, yeah. share it, Dax. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, it's all on fire. I figured. Can I touch it? Yeah, I mean, there's, just be delicate. It's all on, like, you could easily break it. I tried to reinforce the leaves with uh, rubber cement because they're just like ultra delicate and if any weight, I mean they'll still probably break off in the car but don't feel bad if they do. Okay. Do you think that's going to help communicate what you're looking for? Yeah, I think like someone told me that if an investor has something to hold in their hands, 
that can help sell the invention. So if I show the blueprints and I show that I have like this invention journal, which I told you I met with two engineers, right? Mm -hmm. One of them gave me an invention journal. The other, I think I might prefer to work with, but yeah, I've got functional specs, design specs, notes page. And the other engineer drew like a little prototype that we could do. Hmm. So it's got like a little hospital bag dripping water in, but it's like, it's like just to show the function. Guys, we've got a, uh, this is a, this is a special treat. This is a real, this is a real exclusive coming up right now. Uh, this guy is like, he's one of my favorite guys on YouTube of all time. And uh, like OG YouTube, like, like, Derek comedy era, yeah. like Bo Burnham in his bedroom era YouTube, and he's he's great. He's been on like, and he's been in Twenty One Jump Street, Twenty Two Jump Street, and uh, he's he hasn't really performed live before, and so this is sort of a you know the, an experiment of sorts. Um, but he's he's one of my favorite guys. Um, guys, please give it up for Dax Flame. Hello. Um, I have performed live before, but just never stand up comedy. And I don't really know if I'll be doing stand up comedy. I'll give you some options, four options. Um, like, if you're in the mood for a change of pace, Option one and three could work, and then number two is like funny, and four is possibly funny. So one is, uh, do you like poetry? And we can go through them at the end and do a clapping meter. Um, so one, poetry. Two would be a story that like I've been told is funny by some friends of mine. And three is like, uh, if you're in the mood for something like interesting and stimulating, change of pace, uh, I could tell you about an invention idea that I've been working on, like, really hard, like, yeah. And then four is audience participation, which I don't have anything planned for, so if you come on stage, just, you should know that. Um, so one, poems. Two, story. Three, invention. For audience participation. Okay, so the invention wins, and that's exciting because I'm ex working extremely hard at it these days. I did a Kickstarter to raise money for the invention, so I have two thousand dollars that I'm doing it with. And if you want me to change at any point, just yell it out. You can you can yell. And the invention is. Uh, like an indoor garden, and this garden is automated. It waters itself and has UV rays that, that grows it, simulates sun, sunlight. So clap if that sounds exciting. Which, would you get it? And uh, so, so yeah, now I'm just trying to find an investor and like putting a lot of <laughs> eggs in that basket. And I know why you're laughing, because it's a really difficult task. A really difficult task, and uh, it's, what do you think? Okay. Um, so there was this time in my life where I felt really out of touch with everyone because, like, I was in those movies Brandon was talking about, and like, was famous on the internet when I was fifteen. So I was stress sometimes. Now I don't feel like that. Now I like feel like a normal person. But there's this So yeah, I did some stand up just to try something out to see what I could do. Yeah. That's a big reason that like the, I created the invention idea is like like just that I have like 2000 3000 or 2 th less than $2,000 left in my bank account. Uh -huh. Besides the Kickstarter money now, I have yeah. that, but I have to pay the cameraman and that sort of thing. But, uh, so I need to find a way to like, 
sell it ideally within the next three weeks or uh, find another way to sustain my life? Yeah, well, uh, let's see, you got, you got your YouTube and then the 21 Jump Street and, uh, so you got paid, uh, like, maybe you gotta get a job. Yeah, like, <laughs> all I want to, but I just don't know what I would do and how I would make enough to, to, to stay in my apartment. Uh-huh. And if I was working like 12 hours a day to stay there, then yeah. how could I then write and direct movies? Yes. How would I have the time for that? Yeah. I have a lot of friends in LA, so I don't want to like move. I don't know anyone in my hometown really anymore. Um, and yeah. And we've talked about this, but just for the audience, um, actually, I'm just switch. I'm just gonna change up the frame every okay. so often, just so we're mixing it up a little, and then you can cut between them. Yeah, it can hit you hard. Yeah, yeah, because it was. I felt very in love with her. Um. Yeah, and now we don't talk at all. How recently was the breakup? Like June. Like June, we broke up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you think there's any potential of getting back together, or? I I don't th I don't think it would happen. Yeah, I don't think it would happen. Doesn't seem like it would happen. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something you would want, or do you feel like, as difficult as it's been, you've you've moved on or moving on? Well, trying to trying to move on. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it seems like it would be impossible, so I would just try not to want it at all. This looks just like them. Uh, I think the gray looks cool. And then, like, really straight on it. Is it weird to do it this way? So this thing about like being able to control it and, and whatnot, you have to have, maybe it's a kludge type of thing where it's really quick and dirty. Did someone make an, an app for you to do that? There's ways of doing that because it could be Wi-Fi controlled and you can get um, like Arduino yeah, so Wi-Fi. Arduino and like a Raspberry Pi yeah, thing? Yeah, you can get those things that are already configured to do with, with boards that are configured to do Wi-Fi, for example, and then you, with your app, is going to your Wi-Fi or whatever, and it's going to there. You know, that's the quick and easy way to show it that it's gonna work. Um, and um, it, that can be done. I'm working with somebody right now who has a completely different invention. He's not a super high technology person, but he's got that. He bought the board, you know, the Wi-Fi. He's got figured out how to program it. He's not a normal programming guy. Not a surprise that Trump would do that. Unfortunately, there's very little surprises with that. I mean, that's the thing. Everyone always acts surprised by the guy, and he's just doing the same shit he always does. He's just an asshole. Yeah. Have you been uh, dating at all? No. Have you? Oh yeah, you're dating. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I have a girlfriend now, so I just don't date at all. Which is cool. To be honest, I don't miss dating. At all. Yeah, I guess I miss my ex some. Yeah. She was nice, but you know what? But it wasn't meant to be. I'm sure you'll find someone good for you. What is that even, when, anyways, a business plan? I, I mean, it's, it's really like your plan of action. Like, what do you plan on doing? When do you plan on getting this product, like, ready? Like, 
all an investor wants is how they're going to get their money back and how much more money they're going to get. That's that's all they care. So about. find a way to prove that to them. Find a way to prove that. Is there a need for it yeah. out in the market? I think there's definitely a need for that, you know? Yeah. Um, you don't have to go out into a supermarket or a grocery store mm -hmm. to get your veg vegetables. You could have it all in, in your own home. And healthier, because you know it's like where it's healthier, yeah. From. And you could have a variety of it. Yeah. Price and size and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. like, um, I could definitely see it when I'm, you know, if I had a house and space for it and stuff like that. Totally. Right? Totally. All right, what do we just do? Uh, talk to people at UCLA, just a couple people, uh, just getting some advice. Didn't have as much time as I wanted, um, but yeah, just like talking to as many people as possible, because what else are you going to do? Don't you think this time would be better spent, like, I mean, it's not very filmable, but like working on your business plan at home, like doing a lot of research, or what's the goal of... Well, I, I do that at, the, at night time. I do that this weekend. Um, like last night, like plan, doing lots of planning, and I think, I think it is valuable to get out there and talk to people in person as well. Um, I want to write down what you said about, like, like a prop version that... Yeah, like uh, when I was in college, I interned at Google and I was in marketing. Yeah. And for a lot of like potential products they were coming up with, they would make a full on commercial for it. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not gonna wanna live in the same environment that the plant living in, you know? Yeah. So you have different requirements in that plant. So I think maybe your thing, is it's needing like a, like a tent. Okay. So you can see the you can see the stark difference. Between this and that. True. That's a really good point. Is that vegetarian? Mm-hmm. You want the rest? No, no. I seriously think I'm okay. No, it's but. okay. I don't want to get sick. I think it just is hay fever. You know, the weather is changing, they say this year. What? They say that this year, the humidity level, humidity level usually is at 60 to 70%. Mm -hmm. This year, it's at 30%. Oh. Which means that it's more dry than it has been in like years. Wow. Oh, you're holding the branch there. That's okay. There's nothing against that. Yeah, that's where I got. No, this is further than you. No, that's exactly where I got. You have to take one step higher. All right. You win. You win. You won. You won. It's crazy that it doesn't just rip out of the ground. Do you think I would die? No, because you really can see. What? just have the camera by myself tonight um, and so I'll film like my routine well I have to fold some laundry my manager sent me a Christmas gift so I'll open that on camera I ate and um, I should film myself doing some work staying up late doing Craigslist ads because that's kind of my life right now
I've worked with six different cinematographers. It might end up being seven on a 20 day shoot. That's hard to set up. Coordinating their schedules and who I will find if someone cancels. It's hard to figure out which friends will meet up with me on which days. So that inventing something. Anyways, no complaining. So, I posted an ad on Craigslist that says, need an investor for my invention. I just got a reply from someone named Mark who used to own a natural health food store and is looking for a new business opportunity. He literally just emailed me six minutes ago, so I'm going to call him. This could be cool. Hi, Mark. Hi. Hi, uh, you just replied to my Craigslist ad about... Oh, yeah. Uh, Thank, thanks for getting back to me. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, yeah, you know, Brad and I, we actually uh, used to own a natural health food store for many years and had a good run on that, and now we're looking for a new opportunity, and I have no idea what your product or service is, but we're more than glad to at least hear you out. You just never know. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. And actually, it's right up the health food alley. It's a, uh -huh. it's a, it's a product for everyone, but ideally the vegetarian sort of market and health-conscious people. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, yeah. Would you uh, be interested in having a meeting and, like, seeing the business? Well, I have to know beforehand, sure. you know, what the product even is, because I wouldn't want to waste your time or ours. Oh, okay. I'm sure that you and us both, if, if you feel comfortable just telling me, or if you'd rather have me sign an NDA, I can give you my mailing address and I can sign an NDA. Oh, you know, we're I, very, we're on a skeptical guy, so don't I, worry. I trust you, and it's the type of product where I've done so much work on it that I, I don't imagine someone would just jump into it. So, so uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a automated garden. So typically in the first round, people sell about twenty percent of the company. Okay. So if you're asking for thirty percent, work out whatever twenty percent is. I think that values a company at one hundred fifty thousand. Mm. Could sound a little bit high. So maybe you do a hundred thousand dollar valuation. That sounds mm. more reasonable. So you give them thirty percent for a you know for thirty thousand mm. dollars. I don't think I'd go under a hundred thousand dollar valuation. Okay. I just want them to buy the idea, yeah. Yeah, and if they know how to turn it, it's pretty much like you don't even have to write a business plan. It's if they know what to do with it and they're behind your idea, it's really them knowing what to do with it once they have your IP. Yeah. You need to project out like how the business is gonna scale. Because if you don't have that, then it's sort of like you just have an idea, but it only goes a certain, it's like, I don't know what he's looking for. For thirty thousand dollars, you would hope you need to prove to him that he'll at least get thirty thousand back. Right. So how it will scale? Yeah, because what okay, the idea cool. that you have too is like, if he's given you just thirty thousand for the idea, you know, he's gonna have to invest quite a bit more. Totally. Even just just to get it started. Totally. I mean. Okay. How's it going? Uh, it's going well. Cool. How, why did you originally contact me? Um, I was a massive, massive fan of yours, and I saw that you've been posting videos lately, um, and I saw the Kickstarter, and I saw that you specifically asked on the Kickstarter for people who could shoot and could help with production, um, and I thought I could help, so I reached out to you. Cool. So... So, you, uh, you told me that maybe there's interest from some other people who would want to make a different documentary about me. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to them anymore? I've talked to them a little bit and we've been working on it. Um, yeah, I think 
we've talked about this before, but like there is there is a documentary to be made about you. I think about your career, your life to this point. Do you think that? Do you think that it would uh, they pay me a lot to do that? <laughs> I don't know. It's I don't really know how it works in documentaries because sometimes there's people who like won't. There's filmmakers who won't pay their subjects, I think, because it interferes with the truth of it to pay them to be a part of it. And then some people, I guess, you do pay. So I don't know. Uh, I imagine it would be hard to make a documentary about you without you. Uh, so you have some leverage on that. Um, I don't know. Maybe you reach out to people who've been subjects of documentaries. We said the count guy has got like 30,000. I think that was it. The, the difference. Though it was like, it wasn't, if they had said no, we would have found someone else, I imagine. Like, this is... So I could get more. <laughs> I, I, I would assume so. Cool. Yeah. When, when do you think you would hear back about if they wanted to do it, do you think, in the next week and a half? Um, it, they move so slow. Like, there's some things that are in development for years and years and years, and then some things quickly go. Um... Or, Jonathan said that possibly he wants to make a different documentary about me and sell that to, like, The Ringer or something, or YouTube Red, and they would pay me for my life rights or something, uh, and, like, then I could make, like, a hundred thousand bucks. Wow. Well, I don't know about a hundred thousand, but I don't know the exact number. What different documentary is it? I think there's just a doc of his, of the last... More like years of his life, sort of like a uh, has more of a historical doc. I think there's if there's technology parts of it. I think YouTube was much different in two thousand seven. Right. Uh, they totally. They have a YouTube star. They have a child star. It's an autographed copy of uh, the Forrest Gump soundtrack by Tom Hanks. And I I was also reading how much. Um, produce you can actually produce in such a small contained area, you know. From from this? From growing indoors. Oh you know? yeah. That's one benefit is to growing um, indoor compared to outdoor. But just imagine if like your whole apartment was filled with that. Well we do in landscape design we do sustainable vertical walls. Oh. And um, what's cool about that is with gravity is actually how they're like hanging on the wall that uh, presses on the root to create more oxygen. So it kind of like stimulates growth. Whoa. Yeah. Because okay. the first landscaping and crop growth, like agriculture, um, originated on mountainsides and hillsides. Wow. And it kind of makes sense because that was natural irrigation. You know? Wow. So now we've gone to the ground and we have this, you know, irrigation to grow the crops um, flat, but agriculture started um, on mountainsides. You don't want millions of subscribers. You just want people to like you. You have so many fans that care about you. Who watch you work out and try weird Starbucks drinks. I... I want that. We don't have to hurt each other anymore. How's it going? Do you like being in jail? Pretty fun here, it's kind of like Mean Girls. You got, to, you got all your. And really seeing, I guess, the, the invention for me feels like it's been finding itself uh, very well. Thanks. So, your first day shooting was the day that I went to do the behind the scenes of that Star Wars video for Michelle Kerr. Mm -hmm. um, that day when you shot that, how extensive did you think my role in that video would be? Uh, I don't know. I hadn't, I guess I hadn't necessarily, I thought it was would you more be so than it was. 
Would you be disappointed at all if you found out that it was only like five seconds? No, because after after the production, I got the impression that it would only be, you know, 10 to 20 seconds anyway. I've been curious about, in my opinion, one of the most exciting things about this is the app. Um, because to me, it links it, it links uh, humanity and technology, and it links the natural world with technology, and it's an example of how we can use technology to better understand yeah. the natural world. Um, I'm curious if you've had any meetings recently on the app or done any interviews. Would you the ask app? her, would you think it would be weird if I asked her if I did a bad job? What do you mean? In the Star Wars video? Uh, or should I just forget it? Because it was just a shot in the dark sort of thing. Yeah. I just don't. I just want to make sure I didn't. Because she still texts me saying I'm like a good person, and they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or she, I saw someone left a comment. Dex Flynn, and she's like, oh, he's such a nice person. Yeah. So I, just, I don't think she feels like I did a bad job. No, I don't think so. I mean, I think it would be weird if they felt like you did a bad job because they didn't actually give you anything to work with. That's true, they just had me improvise. Yeah. And I think the way you improvise, like in the laughs you got on set were real in the sense that like, what it seemed like, it seemed like you guys created. I saw my ex-girlfriend. Do you want to do it quick? Can you just jump in this frame? Here. A couple questions. Sure, can you see me? Yeah. It's not going to look like as beautiful as I would like the real one to look, but it will get the point across, I think. Functionality. So it's just a commercial to show you. What? It's a commercial to show you. Investors or Kickstarter people? First, like in the first version, I go to the fridge and I'm frustrated. Check my ma Google Maps and I'm like, oh crap, I can't make it in time. I have to go without eating. Yeah. Second version, I'm like making my salad. Just pick, pick it really easy. And I'm just like, oh, add a kale. So I pull out my app, open my seeds and replant some. So, cool. Maybe start from just like, so you don't start already touching it. Oh, okay. So I'll just start there, just. Yeah, okay. Give her a. Getting a lot of shots of beautiful Los Angeles. Stated though, all I want to hear is you oh. can't hear me. I want you to be like, today we spent the day. Today we were getting a lot of shots of Los Angeles and having a relaxing beach day. But it was mostly just getting a lot of shots because uh, I just had to take my mind off the invention for a day. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to jump back into it full energy. And well, tonight I'm going to but it's really beautiful here.
but I come to the beach a lot of on, on times on weekends to bike around and enjoy LA. Um, and yeah, I don't want to leave LA. On the way back from the beach, the cinematographer and I drove past the Chateau Lane's bowling alley and pulled over to film it. This is the first footage I ever filmed of you. The cinematographer was frustrated that I was filming footage of a bowling alley I wasn't even bowling at and was even more frustrated when I asked him to film some interesting looking spiders in the parking garage. He thought I'd never find a way to use the footage, even though I told him it was one of the first places we ever went on a date. Like, simplicity? Or like something like that? Mm. I think it should be kind of like app, like you know apps or like little words like Go grow or learn. Not yeah. Go grow, but like how, yeah. Green. Greenery? That's good. That's perfect. Greenery? Yeah. That's it. Really? Yeah, you got it. Greenery. So, have, so you've been pitching this idea, right? Kind of been preparing to pitch it, like figuring out what the idea is exactly. It's sort of a bad time of year to pitch stuff because most people, like, take off after Thanksgiving, they just like take off the rest of the year. So we haven't formally pitched it anywhere. Um, last night you said that there would maybe be something for me to sign and maybe an update, and I was hoping it would be something that said like that you would pay me for some some of my time. Yeah, I think this. The thing to sign would be like a, just an agreement between you and us uh, to be like the only people who can shop your story for the next however many months or years. And then how 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 much would they pay me per per month or year? I have no idea. I think that's up to you. I've never cool. been in the middle of those negotiations before. How quickly could we do that? It's hard to say this time of year again because like. Everyone just shuts it down, as I'm sure you've noticed. True. Um, well, um, it's hard to say. Who do I? Who could I negotiate that with, Mike? I guess. Yeah. And then he would have some opinions as to the people that we would go to, including YouTube Red, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix. You know, buyers like that. And so, so then, well. Uh, well, during that exclusive period, would I be given a fee for uh, giving you those exclusive exclusivity to pitch it and stuff? No, not typically. Like, that's just not our model. I mean, we, there are companies that are just like basically a sausage factory and they would say, hey, here's, you know, 2500 bucks or, for, you know, whatever they could come up with in order to lock down your rights. But then that's just like, that project is just one of a hundred projects they're trying to get off the ground, right? Yeah. So then the other thought is, say that the monthly thing was out of your comfort zone, uh, maybe you could tell me how likely it is that, um, that it would then become an actual documentary? Yeah. And if it became an actual documentary, uh, how much would you guys pay me to have me as the subject of the documentary? Right. Um, we wouldn't pay you, the buyer would pay you. And how much would they pay me? It depends, because if Vox, which is, a, or Vice, wanted to do it, it would be a very small amount of money that, to do the whole project. Whereas if Netflix wanted to do it and make this their big Sundance film thing, mm. that's a much bigger budget. You understand the difference? Yes. Okay. So it's possible you would sell it for like $20,000 compared to... Four hundred thousand dollars. We wouldn't do anything without consulting you, right? So it's possible that we would work with you. <clears throat> it, it's possible that we would go out together, and this would be the best deal that we would have on the table. And we would have to look at it and say, "Is this really worth it to do it?" Now the idea is to do it.
I, I, I wanted to give up, sort of, but I wasn't going to. Mm -hmm. I wanted to. Then that night, the, this investor emailed me. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the doors were open. And now he won't. It, that was my moment, you know? And I think I blew it. I don't know. I wouldn't be so hard on yourself. But the cover letter is not good. I just rushed it, I think. Dude, I've never written cover letters in my life. So it might not be that. That might. I don't think so. Like sometimes it's not about that. They probably don't even read. Like I said, they invest into people, and um, if he even responded to. But you, how can I show him that I'm a cool, in person to work with if he won't answer the call? S email him a short video of yourself. The commercial. <laughs> well, sure, but like just the personal. Like me talking to my phone or an old video? Oh, you talking to your phone. Something for him. Something you made just for him. Go. Wait, start over. Okay. Go. Okay, wait, can you do a countdown? I'm getting nervous. Okay. Three, two, one. Hey, Mark. Uh, would love to get your feedback on the invention, positive or negative. Just so passionate about this and really excited to, looking forward to hearing back from you and possibly starting up a relationship and would love to work with you. I shouldn't call him again. Not yet. 8 p.m. Okay, I just sent that text. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hey Mark, I uh, just wanted to call to check to see if you'd gotten the executive summary in the cover letter. Um, cool, hope you have a good day and uh, thanks. Nice, right to the point. Okay, I feel good now because yeah. I was supposed to leave a message. I don't want him to just not know what number called him. Right, and that's a very friendly, non-aggressive, and you called it, you use the word executive, which always gets people on their toes. Especially these days, it's very personal. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I think he's an old, older guy. Yeah, well, you don't want to come across as if it's like a Facebook weirdo. He's not that old. He's in Hello? Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, this is Theodore from Kickstarter. I mean, from. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Whenever you call, make sure you leave your number. Gotcha. I, that's exactly yeah. why I was calling, because I knew I forgot to leave my number. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I, uh, you know, pass that on to uh, Brad, too, you know, that you had followed up. Uh, he's a very busy man, so I don't know if he's had a chance to take a look at everything yet. Um, I did, and, you know, I, I personally like the concept, and I think it could be interesting. Uh, but Brad is really the key, because he's the money man. He's the actual investor, so... Gotcha. You, have to see, you have to see what his thoughts are. So as soon as I hear um, what his thoughts are, I'll certainly have the courtesy to let you know one way or the other. Um, what's the best phone number for you? Uh, uh, I, I can, uh, should I tell you now? Do you have a... Sure. Uh, 469. What are you doing today? Oh, um, so... <coughs> I feel like now is just the moment of truth and... Uh, last night, I realized that I probably am going to fail at my original goal, which was to make money before I leave town Saturday, which is two days from now. I just, I ended up speaking to Mark on the phone. I called him again, I spoke to the investor, and he seemed interested, but it's gonna, he, he, it's gonna take more time. It's not gonna happen in the next two days. Uh, I don't think I'll hear from the producers in the next two days either. And so last night I thought, well, my only option is to then use the Kickstarter 
leftover invention budget on food in January. But I thought that's extremely lame because I made this invention to help the world. I wanted to, and I wanted to keep my apartment, which I would be able to do with the leftover invention budget. But then what kind of message would I be sending to the people watching the documentary? I want to give an ins if my purpose is in life is to make the world a better place, then I need to make it one chance I have at that. If the invention might not work out is to make the documentary very inspiring. So instead of spending the invention budget on food, I'm going to try and make the invention with my own hands and it might not work, but it will be a good metaphor for the ending of the documentary, a good metaphor to show that you can you, do anything. Um, so I'm going to just go buy some grow lights and a pot and, uh, and a pump and a tank, water tank, and then an Arduino and I w would have to look, well, I don't know if I'll be able to make it automatic, but I'll just try my best and I think it would make a good metaphor ending, metaphorical ending. That's on its lowest setting. Did you buy this? Mm -hmm. Cool. You did it. Almost. It's almost done. I gotta set up the automatic water pump. I can show you your foot. You wanna see? I, I already know it works. I just uh, have to set up the right timer. Thing needs. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Where's the timer in there? 
there a timer? Uh, that's the timer, so it's not set up to it right now. As a matter of fact, um, can you hold this real quick? Is it warm? Wait, wait, keep it very warm. Well, you can you can drop that. That's fine now. Can I use your restroom real quick? Yeah, go ahead. So, wait, I'm gonna screw up the shot. I guess. Oh no, you it's wanna, fine. You don't think? I can just like. Uh, Your haircut. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Sitting there at the beginning when I thought about it, I thought, if I get some day job, will I, I'll have to give up on everything. And, uh, and I wanted to change the world too. I wanted to do something extremely cool. Uh, and so, so I thought, like, why not make this awesome invention that just popped into my head? Um, and so that was a big drive. And in the end, I succeeded. This documentary hopefully will be extremely inspiring. So still I'm glad maybe, especially if I end up still getting to drive Uber or sell my car and keep my apartment and then something else works out. Plus those producers wanna make a documentary about me and they would pay me a 100,000 bucks or something. Did they say that? A hundred thousand? Wow. That's insane. What, are you talking to them right now? I had a meeting with them this week. Damn. I mean, that's like the best deal you could possibly get. Yeah, that wouldn't have happened if I didn't do all this. Really? Yeah, because he just emailed me because he saw my Kickstarter video. I mean, that's huge. If it works out. But it's just huge. Alright, I think the lesson to be taken though is that you put yourself out there and tried something crazy and the fact that you even tried this thing that's crazy, even if the thing that you tried to do doesn't work, other things could come up because you just put in the effort. Yeah, I think that's the theme of the movie because I wanted the theme to be redemption, but I, because like I wanted to not feel like uh, my, like, like that even if you, go through breakup that like it you can still make a difference and stuff but then um I, then i yeah Isn't the point, Dex, that you that you tried no matter what, and that but isn't the moral of the story just to to yeah to put out your like full effort no matter what like you, the outcome could be or might be because even just the act of putting in that effort like could lead to great reward. Yeah, it may or may not, but you know what definitely won't lead to any reward is not trying. True. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Like a little, like you could get a job at Uber, like that's a tiny amount of effort, and what you'll get for a tiny amount of effort is very...